Okay, so let's have lesson 4 of on sa complex number. So the argument and trigonometric form. So una banggit ko nga yung complex number, pwede lata i-represent as vector. So una ibigay ko na yung magnitude, that is the modulus. Tapos na ibigay ko na yung complex conjugate. So yung reflection niya. So next is, kunin naman natin direction. O yung angle between dun sa vector natin. Okay, so that is the argument and the trigonometric form. So ito yung all about sa ating lesson, on, ating lesson 4. So, definition, if Z, is a, if Z is an element of complex number, provided that your X is not equal to 0, so meaning yung real part is non-zero, so Z is equal to X plus IY for all X and Y element ng real number, then the argument of Z denoted, denoted by arg of Z is equal to, so nagkaroon siya ng piecewise function, so arg, arg of Z is equal to arc tangent of Y over X. Okay, so kailan ka gagamit ng arc tangent y over x? So kailan mo gagamitin ng formula yan? Pag x is greater than 0 and y is not equal to 0. So basically, anong quadrant to? So pag yung x greater than 0, that is positive. Pag yung y is not equal to 0, so pwedeng positive, pwedeng negative. So anong quadrant yung positive negative or positive positive? So that is quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Okay, so ang technique... Pag alam mo quadrant 1 or quadrant 4, yung complex number mo, so syempre gagawin mo siyang RCF. So ang gagamitin mo is yung arc tangent ng y over x. Ganun na kasimple. So don't forget to set yung calculator niyo sa degree. Although ang nakikita mo dito may pi. So yung pi, obvious naman that's 180 degrees. So for convenient ng lahat, naka degrees tayo. Tapos that is 180 minus 180 yung mga ibang nakalagay dyan. So ulitin ko lang, pag quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 yung complex number mo, so, ang gagamitin mo, arc tangent ng y over x. Next, arc tangent ng y over x plus pi or simply 180. So, pwede na ako, pwede na mo 180 degrees. Okay, kailan naman yan? Pwede yan pag ito ay nasa x less than 0. So, x less than 0 probably nasa quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. But, ang sabi, y is greater than or equal sa 0. So, ito basically, ito yung part na kung saan, ito yung quadrant 2. Okay, so meaning, pag alam mo quadrant to siya, ito yung, ito yung gagamitin formula. Another, pag yung given is negative 2, comma 0. So, yung may nga negative real number. So, pag ang given is negative real number, automatic quadrant to tayo. O dito tayo sa arc tangent ng y over x plus 180. Okay, next. Lastly, arc tangent of y over x minus pi, pag yung x less than 0 and y less than 0. So, may quadrant 1, 2, and 4 na tayo. So, obviously, ito ay quadrant 3. Okay. So, yan yung mga keynote natin. So, tatandaan mo yan ha. Pag yung x is not equal to 0, ito yung gagamitin mo. Ngayon, ito yung magiging tanong. Sir, what if yung x naman is equal to 0? Possible din po ba yan? Yes, possible yun. So, if x is equal to 0, then the argument of z is equal to pi over 2 or 90 degrees pag yung y greater than 0. Okay. So, meaning nasa taas lang siya. So, meaning yung plot ng point niya, Nandito dito. Okay, nasa dun sa quadrant to, dun dito mismo sa 90 degrees. Next, pag nasa ilalim, pag negative siya, that is negative 90 degrees or pi, negative pi over 2. Okay, so tandaan yung mga ganyang term. Another pa, siguro may nahinahanap pa kayo dyan, sir. Wala po dyan si positive real number. Okay, so what if naman, uh, what if naman, kanyari binigyan kata 2,0, 3,0. So, ano naman yung angle nyan? So, ang graph nyan nandito, somewhere nandito sila lahat. So, ang angle nyan is just 0 degree or isa pang revolution, 360 degree. Okay lang naman yun. So, pinaka-safe, 0 degrees na lang nalagay nyo. Okay, so at least naibigay ko sa inyo lahat. So, una mong gagawin, alamin mo kung anong quadrant. Sir, paano kung hindi ko alam? So, eh, problema mo na yun. Pero sabi ko nga, lahat ng complex number, kaya mong gawing RCF. So, sa RCF, kaya mo siyang i-locate sa Z-plane. So, pag na-locate mo siya, saka ka mag-decide anong formula gagamitin ko. Or ano doon sa mga condition yung sinasatisfy niya. Then, saka tayo mag-proceed. Okay, so yung example na ito, ipapasok ko na doon sa polar and trigonometric form. Kasi ganun din eh, kukunin natin yung argument, kukunin yung modulus, double time lang din. So, definition, dito ko na ipapasok yung pagkuha ng angle. So, let's have the polar and trigonometric form. So, naalala nyo may standard form. Meron din 
rectangular coordinate form. Meron din standard rectangular coordinate form. So, tatlo na yung alam nyo. So, kahit saan doon, magpabalik-balik ka, alam mong gawin. Okay, ngayon, paano naman kung i-consider na natin si modulus sa si argument? So, meaning, isasama ko na si modulus, isasama ko na rin si argument. So, that is, ito yung trigonometric sa polar form. Okay? So, actually, yung mga susunod pa, ganun din eh. Kailangan si modulus sa si argument. So, given any z, non-zero complex number. So, again, non-zero complex number ulit. Such that z is equal to x plus i, y. Then, the polar form of z is equal to z is equal to r comma theta. Okay, ulit. Ang polar form daw niya is parang coordinate din, RCA, pero ang pinagkaiba, that is R comma theta. Mamaya ako sasabihin ko ano yung R and theta. And next, the trigonometric form of Z is equal to R cosine theta plus I sine theta or mas kilalamin dati, pinabasa as R cis theta. Okay, so that is R cosine I sine theta. So, yung R cosine theta plus I sine theta, ito lang siya, R cis theta. Pwede rin yan. Okay, so, sir, magkaparehas ba si polar sa si trigonometric? No. Si polar, ito yun, parang coordinates. Si trigonometric, no. Para naman siyang uh, standard form, yung dating. Pero may mga theta, tapos uh, modulus lang siya. Okay, so, where R is the modulus of Z, nanda mo yan, yung R daw is modulus of Z, and yung theta is the argument of Z. Okay, so, meaning, yung ginagawa natin pagkuha ng modulus, kinukuha, pinagawa natin pagkuha ng argument, nandi dito pa rin. Okay, so let's have example. Ang gagawin ko, magbibigay ako ng in other form. For example, ang binigay ko is RCF, binigay ko standard form. Gagawin natin, hanapin natin yung polar form sa kayong kanyang trigonometric form. Okay, so basically, apply ko na rin dito yung pagkuha ng angle o yung argument ng complex number. So, for example, number 1, let Z is equal to 3 plus 2i, yung favorite na sir. Okay, so in RCF, pwede ko siyang gawin ganito. That is 3, comma 2. So, obviously, alam ko nasa quadrant 1. So, pagdating sa formula, sino gagamitin ko sa argument? So, dito. Pasok sa taas. Okay, pero syempre, importante muna natin kunin si modulus of Z. Okay, note that the modulus of Z is equal to square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. Or simply, this is square root of 13. Okay, so, in this case... Kunin mo na yung square root of 13. Huwag ka nang mag-decimal pa. Kasi ang gara na pag nilagay natin dito sa RC, saka dito sa may polar form. Okay, so next. Yes, nakuha ko na yung modulus. Kailangan natin yung argument. So, paano natin kunin yung kanyang argument? So, again, anong quadrant si 3 comma 2? O si 3 plus 2i? That is quadrant 1. So, kunin natin yung kanyang argument. So, arg of C is equal to arc tangent of 2 over 3. So, wala na ako ibang gagawin kasi quadrant 1 lang siya. Okay, so what is arc tangent of 2 over 3? So, pag inalke mo, shift tan ng 2 over 3. Okay, so that is 33.69 degrees. So, that is equal sa 33.69 degrees. So, kahit check mo dun sa silob na kalke niya, sir, para makita mo. So, meaning, meron na akong argument, meron na akong Z. So, note, kaya ko na ilagay yung polar form. So, polar form of Z is equal to, ano daw yung polar form? R comma theta. So, R is modulus. So, that is square root of 13 comma 33.69 degrees. So, ito yung kanyang polar form. Next, kunin naman natin yung kanyang trigonometric form. So, yung trigo form niya is equal sa, ah, sorry, that is Z is equal to R cosine theta plus I sine theta. So, lagay ko muna si square root of 13. Then, maglalagay ako dito ng parenthesis. That is cosine of 33.69 degrees plus I sine of 33.69 degrees. Okay. So, ito yung kanyang trigo form. Or, pag ginawa ko si is form, that is square root of 13 cis of 33.69. 69 degree. So, almost the same lang naman yung basa niyan. Okay? So, tandaan yan. Yung part na. So, next, W. For number 2. Ah, W kuha tayo ng So, let's say W is negative 2 minus 4i. Okay. So, in RCF, that is negative 2 comma 4. So, that is negative 2 comma negative 4. Sorry. Okay, so obviously that is in quadrant 2. So, ibang formula yung gagamitin natin mamaya. 
Okay, so next is, kunin natin yung modulus. The modulus of W, the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 4 squared. Okay, so negative 2 squared is 4, then 4 squared is 16, so that is square root of 20. So basically, that is square root of 20, or pag sinimplify, that is 2 square root of 5. Pwede yan. Next, iskunin natin yung argument. Yung argument of W, since siya ay nasa quadrant 2, check natin. So, sabi, pag nasa quadrant 2, that is arc tangent ng y over x plus pi, or plus 180. So, that is arc tangent ng negative 4 over negative 2 plus 180 degrees. Okay, so, kalkyo lang nyo, sir. That is arc tangent ng negative 4 over negative 2. Okay, then plus 180 degrees. Okay, so that is 243. Okay, so check ko lang ulit. That is arc tangent na negative 4. Shift arc tangent. Okay, then that is uh, quadrant. Ang sabi to? This, ah, sorry. Sorry, nagkamali sir. Ang negative 2 kama negative 4 is quadrant 3. Okay, so, dapat ito ay minus. Okay, nagtaka si sir dun eh. Sasagot. So, dapat, this is minus 180 degree. So, this is equal sa negative. So, this is equal sa negative 116.56 degree. Okay, so, sir, pwede po yung negative. Yes, pwede naman yung negative angle. So, therefore, ano yung polar form? Yung PF ng W Latin is equal to, that is 2 square root of 5 kama negative 116.56 degree. Okay, so yung TF nya, yung trigonometric form, that is 2 square root of 5 multiplied by cosine ng negative 116.56 degree plus I sine ng negative 116.56 degree. Okay, or simply sa Cs, that is 2 square root of 5 Cs of negative 116.56 degree. So, ito yung mga sagot niya. Okay, so, ganun siya kadali sa pagkawin ng polar and trigonometric form. Okay, so, sa next example, ang gagawin ko naman, pwede mo ba, sir, going from trigonometric going standard form? Yes, possible yun. Okay, so, yun susunod lahat ang example. Okay, so, sa next example natin, so, kung nakikita mo, 3 is, ah, number 3, Z is equal to square root of 2 Zs Cis 45 degrees. So, meaning naka-trigonometric form siya. So, madaling hanapin yung PF niyan. Kita na kasi. So, yung polar form niya. Polar form of Z is equal to square root of 2 comma 45 degrees. So, ganun kadali. Ngayon ang problema, paano hanapin si RCF sa si standard form sa si SRCF niyan? So, mapapaisip ka. Sir, ano? Paano yun? Okay. So, basically, this is equal sa square root of 2 pag ginawa trigonometric cosine 45 degrees plus i sine 45 degrees. Okay, next. I-distribute ko yung square root of 2. So, that is square root of 2 cosine 45 degrees plus i multiplied by square root of 2 sine 45 degrees. Note na itong part na to, ito yung x. Ito yung y. So, that is x plus i y form. So, meaning, isasolve mo lang yung x. That is square root of 2 cosine 45. That is square root of 2 cosine. Sorry, that is square root of 2. Then, cosine cosine 45 degrees. That is 1. Okay. So, nung sinolve ko, that is 1. So, this is 1. The next is square root of 2. Square root of 2. Then, sine 45 degrees. That is also 1 nung sinolve ko. So, that is simply plus i. So, therefore, ito yung RCF. Ito yung kanyang uh, SF. Nung Z natin. 1 plus I. So, ano yung RCF? RCF niya is 1 comma 1. So, ano yung SRCF? SRCF niya is 1 comma 0 plus 1 comma 0 times 0 comma 1. Okay. So, ganun din. Pwede mong dalin doon papunta dito. So, ang gagawin lang yung formula na yun. 
i-expand mo, then yung part na to is yung x at yung part na y. Okay, then i-calculate mo na lang. So, mukha mo na yung standard form, saka yung SRCF, saka yung RCF ng, trigonomet ng trigonometric form na given natin. Okay, so proceed tayo dito sa properties ng trigonometric form. So, let z is equal to r cosine a plus i sine a. Then, w is equal to p cosine b, i sine b. Then, z times w is equal to rp times cosine a plus b plus i sine a plus b. So, anong ginagawa pag multiplication? Yung mumultiply ko yung modulus, i-add ko yung angle. Ganun kasimple. So, instead na gawin mong Uh, instead na gawin mong i-multiply mo pa siya literal, ang gawin mo na lang pag mag-multiply ka dalawang complex number, i-multiply mo lang modulus, i-add mo yung angle, tapos na. Okay, so ganun kasimple. So next is, paano naman kunin yung kanyang inverse? So z inverse is equal to 1 over z, simply equal sa 1 over r cosine a minus i sine a. Number 3, paano mag-divide? Ganun lang din, i-divide mo yung modulus, then ang gagawin mo lang dito pag division, so kukunin mo yung difference ng a and b. And lastly, number 4, the Demoibres Theorem. So, Demoibres Theorem. So, sa next topic, madidiscuss ko na siya. So, ano ba application nito ni Demoibres Theorem? So, for the meantime, ipapakita ko paano lumabas si 1, paano lumabas si 2. Okay? So, yun lang. Then, kaya nyo na yung 3, then 4. So, for number 1, ito yung proof. Okay, so, consider natin si Z times W. Si z times w is simply r cosine a plus i sine a. Sorry, that's i sine a multiplied by p. Then ito ay cosine b plus i sine b. Okay, so yung mga modulus, ipag-multiply na natin sa labas. That is equal sa r times p multiplied by cosine a plus i i sine a multiplied by cosine b plus i sine b then mag foil method lang tayo dun sa dalawang may cosine saka sine so this is simply rp then this is equal sa cosine a times cosine b so that is cosine a cosine b next plus i cosine a sine b so ito na yung part na yun Okay, next, plus i sin a cosine b. Then plus, that is i squared, multiplied by sin a times sin b. Okay, so nag-boil method lang ako sa loob, so huwag kayo malilito dyan. Next is, kunin natin yung mga may imaginary part tapos yung walang imaginary part. Kasi obvious naman yung i squared natin dyan is negative 1. Okay, so that is equivalent sa rp multiplied by, this is cosine a cosine b. Then minus sine a sine b. Saan galing yan sir? Ito. Then plus, labas ko yung i, this is i. That is, unahin ko yung sin a. Sin a, cosine b, plus cosine a, sin b. So, pinag-com ko na lang din. Okay, next is cos cos sin sin. So, that is cos cos sin sin. That is cosine a plus b. So, kung doon titingin ka sa may sum and difference nung sa trigonometric identities. Then, sin cos cos sin is sin a plus b. So, therefore, this is equal sa rp. Okay, then multiplied by cosine a plus b, then plus i sine a plus b. Okay, so therefore this is done. So, ganun siya kasimple. Okay, so napakasimple at ang gagawin dito, ang gagawin mo lang, i-add mo yung angle, then i-multiply mo lang yung modulus, then ayun na yung sagot. Yun ang pinakamas madaling paraan. Kaysa mag-multiply ka pa, gamit yung mga property natin dati. Okay, so next is number 2. Paano yung 2? Sa 2, z inverse is equal to 1 over c. Okay, so 1 over c is equal to 1 over r tapos cosine a plus i sine a. Okay, so ganun yung nangyari. So, Pero, paano po gagawin dyan? So, isasettle ko muna yung 
A latin o yung R, that's 1 over R multiplied by 1 over cosine A plus I sine A. Okay, so ngayon, anong gagawin natin dito? So, dito pwede ko na-apply yung complex conjugate o yung pagmumultiply ng conjugate. So, for example, yung nakita mo sa denominator is x plus iy, imumultiply mo lang siya sa x minus iy. Okay, so, ini negative reciprocal. So, imumultiply ko lang siya sa complex conjugate niya. O sa conjugate niya. Okay, so, this is imumultiply ko sa cosine a minus i sine a. So, hindi basta sa ilalim lang. So, dapat, nagmumultiply ako ng 1. Yung hindi lang apekto. That's cosine a minus i sine a. Okay, no next. This is equal sa 1 over r. Then, 1 times cosine a, that is cosine a minus i sine a. So, kung napapansin mo, nakuha ko na ito as yun sa ilalim, that is cosine squared a. Okay, then, i times i is i squared. So, that is negative i squared. Then, sine squared a. So, pag minultiply yung ilalim. Then, i squared is negative 1. So, therefore, this is 1 over r. Then, cosine a minus i sine a over cosine squared a plus sine squared a. So, note that sabi ng trigonometric identities, sine squared a plus cosine squared a is equal to 1. So, ito ay parang mawawala na lang. So, therefore, ang sagot is 1 over r. Okay, then multiply by cosine a minus i sine a. Okay, so that is done. So, nakuha ko yung formula pag kukunin ko naman yung reciprocal ng isang complex number in terms of trigonometric form. So, yung 3 and 4 mag-serve. Well, so, actually, yung 3 lang mag-serve as parang activity or check mo na lang din kung paano yan gagawin. Okay, so that's all for today. Hoping na may natutunan ka. So, proceed tayo sa next lesson sa susunod week. Okay, then, para sagutan yung mga dapat gawin. Then, huwag kang huwag kalimutan na mag... Uh, huwag kalimutan na lagi kang... Uh, maging updated sa mga pangyayari sa subject natin. Okay, so that's all. Thank you.